From starting her comedy career at the tender age of three to now being regarded as one of the greatest performers in television history, this is the story of Julia Louis-Dreyfus and how she became a sensation in the television industry. How did it all begin for Julia? Born in January 1961, our comedic sensation and beloved entertainer, Julia Louis-Dreyfus was born to Judith and Gerard Louis-Dreyfus. Julia's early years were marked by change because her parents went their separate ways when she was just one year old. I don't remember them together, she once shared. When she turned five, Judith married a surgeon named Daddy Tom who became vital to Julia's life. Meanwhile, Daddy William had already found a new partner. Life took an adventurous turn when Julia embarked on a journey to Sri Lanka with her mother at the age of seven. Daddy Tom's involvement with Project Hope, an international healthcare organization, prompted this move. Little did young Julia know that these early experiences would shape the incredible comedian we know and love today. On returning to Washington, D.C., Julia navigated two distinct worlds. On weekdays, she shared a home with her mom, Daddy Tom, and her half-sisters, Amy and Lauren. Weekends brought a different scene as she traveled to Mount Kisco, New York, to be with Daddy William and his expanding family, including two more half-sisters, Phoebe and Emma. As a kid, Julia and her neighborhood buddies started their own theater gang, calling themselves the University Players. Their plays were often staged in Julia's basement, where they would put on shows. Among the crew was Julia's next-door pal, Margaret Edson, who later snagged the prestigious Pulitzer Prize for her play, Wit, in 1999. Julia's passion for acting blossomed at the all-girls Holton Arms School in Bethesda, Maryland, shaping her into an incredible woman we know today. It was also here that she discovered her knack for making people burst into laughter, laying the groundwork for the comedic genius she would become. In 1979, she headed to Northwestern University in Chicago, where she dove straight into the world of auditions and snagged a role in the Meow Show, the go-to comedy gig on campus. For Julia, it wasn't just another show, it was a game changer to her. Her standout performances led to an invite to join a fresh theater crew led by Brad Hall, a Northwestern dropout. They called themselves The Practical Theater Company and started with a bang, presenting a show dubbed The Golden 50th Anniversary Jubilee in a cozy 150-seat theater behind the famous Second City in Chicago's Piper's Alley. The buzz caught on like wildfire, reaching some important folks out east. The stage was set for something big. Thanks to recommendations from Tim Kazarinski, a hotshot on Saturday Night Live, the big boss, Dick Ebersol, caught their act and hired all four of them right then and there. Thrilled about scoring their dream job, Julia decided to ditch college after junior year and set off for the bright lights of Chicago. But guess what? The dream wasn't all glitter and glam. Fast forward two years into the show and things took a turn. Brad got the boot and Julia felt more alone than ever. But here's the silver lining, a pal she'd made along the way, none other than the witty writer Larry David. When Dick left the show in 1985 after her third season and Lauren returned, she wasn't asked to come back. So she and Brad packed their bags for sunny Los Angeles, ready to tackle a career with ups and downs from trying out pilots that never took off to hopping on shows that lasted only a short time. It was a bit of a roller coaster. They even said, I do, in 1987. But just when things seemed stuck, a phone call came a few years later. This was the Seinfeld phone call, and it flipped the script of their lives entirely. A couple of days later, I got a call from my agent, she said. Larry David's written this script with a comedian, Jerry Seinfeld. I hadn't really heard of him, and they're adding a girl. Before Julia hopped on board, Larry and David had checked out actors like Rosie O'Donnell, Patricia Heaton, and Megan Mullally for their show. After Julia did her audition, Larry even tracked her down in the parking lot to ask what she thought. And guess what? She wasn't entirely sure. Despite some doubts about taking the gig, she signed on that weekend. Sure, Seinfeld didn't hit it big overnight, but it eventually became the gem Julia believed it could be. The show lasted nine seasons, scoring its spot as one of NBC's top shows and earning Julia her first Emmy. While she rocked it as Elaine, she also became a mom to Henry in 1992 and Charlie in 1997. When Seinfeld wrapped up in May 1998 with the finale that got people talking, Julia took a break to chill with her little children. After a break, Julia was ready to get back to work. 
Her attempt with the 2002 show Watching Ellie didn't quite hit the mark, lasting only two seasons. People even whispered about the Seinfeld curse. But Julia wasn't one to stay down for long. In 2006, she returned strong with The New Adventures of Old Christine, a CBS sitcom about a divorced mom running a gym and dealing with a chaotic life. The show kept us laughing for five seasons before wrapping up in 2010. If Seinfeld made her TV royalty, the hilariously blunt HBO series Veep sealed the deal, turning her into a true comedy legend. She snagged the role and Veep hit the screens in 2012, instantly becoming a hit. Yet, behind the scenes, Julia was still wrestling with something. When you have children, which is in so many ways a glorious endeavor, part of it is about constantly separating, Julia told The New Yorker. Even when they're born, I remember thinking, Oh God, I miss that movement in my body. And from there on, that story continues. They crawl away from you. They go to school. It's a constant. Separation has been a theme in my life, something that I've really struggled with. As the praise kept rolling in, Julia scooped up an Emmy for Outstanding Lead Actress in a Comedy every single season that Veep was in the running. But amid the celebrations, a familiar challenge emerged. First, in 2016, during Emmy weekend, her world shook as her father passed away. Then, just a year later, the day after her victorious win, she got hit with another blow, a breast cancer diagnosis. The battle to bounce back meant she had to pause from working on Veep's final season, leaving her without any nominations in 2018. Yet, for a now cancer-free Julia, that was okay. So I was glad to give the Emmys a skip this year, she shared in December 2018. Now that Veep has wrapped up, Julia finds herself in another one of those life pauses that are a theme for her. But don't worry, she's still there, ready to bring us more joy and laughter for another day. Even when faced with challenges, Julia keeps going, and we can't wait to see what she does next. There are also several myths about Julia Louis-Dreyfus that a lot of people believe. She's not some billionaire heiress riding on the family's fortune. When a magazine probed about her dad's massive business, the Louis Dreyfus Company, a mega deal in commodities and shipping valued in billions, she straightened things out. She hilariously remarked, It's unbelievable because whatever I do, people just assume it's true. FYI, Julia's estimated to be worth around $200 million on her own after her impressive career. Secondly, on HBO's Veep, Selena Meyer transforms her character using a killer wardrobe. Picture this. Wigs, tight clothes, and crazy shoes. Julia spills the tea, saying, Wearing this wig and these tight clothes and these shoes that are nuts, it's all very physically constraining. It's just very sucked into the whole look, and it feels right. It's a nice place to start getting really mad. It starts to inform the rage. But hold up. Knowing that Selena's anger isn't a mirror of Julia's personal stuff is crucial. She's made it clear. I don't have a ton of baggage. There's not some grotesque, dark thing. So what you see on the screen is about the character, not Julia herself. In 2014, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, the hilarious star of Veep, went all out by posing without clothes for Rolling Stone's cover. In this special edition celebrating her as the first lady of comedy, Julia flaunts a tattoo of the U.S. Constitution on her back, complete with a signature from John Hancock. The catch? Hancock actually signed the Declaration of Independence, not the Constitution. Julia playfully blamed her daring photo on Twitter, jokingly attributing it to a bit too much fun with some alcohol. Finally, Julia Louis-Dreyfus has mixed but fond memories of her stint on Saturday Night Live. If you enjoyed this video, remember to check out other videos about beautiful ladies of yesteryear.